Hi everyone and welcome. In this video I walk you through how I've set up everything for the best VR experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 using the Pimax Crystal Lite VR headset. We'll go step by step through optimizing your setup, starting with DLSS Swapper to get the latest NVIDIA DLSS files, configuring both the NVIDIA app and control panel, dialing in the best settings in Pimax Play and finally adjusting everything inside MSFS 2024 for smooth, immersive performance. At the end I show you how all of this comes together with a few flight tests, starting with the Bell 407 for precise control, pushing the system with the 737 under load and wrapping up with high speed run in the Super Hornet over the Alps. Let's get started. But before, I want to give you a quick heads up. There's a flash sale coming up for the Pimax Crystal Light. If you've been thinking about upgrading your VR headset, now's the perfect time. Exactly tomorrow, May 24, there will be a small 5 hour window where you can get 10% off this headset which in my opinion is currently the best VR option on a budget for sim enthusiasts. I've included all the details in the video description, so make sure to check that out if you're interested. Now, let's get into the setup. First thing to do is to download and install DLSS Swapper. It's a free utility that makes it really easy to update the DLSS and frame generation DLLs used by your games. Once it's installed, go ahead and launch it. You see a list of all the games it detects on your system. Look for MSFS 2024 in the list and click on it. If you're using an RTX 4090 or newer, you'll also have access to DLSS frame generation, so let's start with that. Click on the DLSS frame generation tab, then select the first DLL in the list. This should be the latest version released by Nvidia. Click swap and it'll start downloading the file. It might take a little while for some reason, so just be patient. Once the download is complete, click swap again to apply it. Now, do the same thing for DLSS. Select the latest version from the list and swap it in. Alright, when you're done with DLSS Swapper, go ahead and close everything. Now, let's move on to the NVIDIA app. Open up the NVIDIA app, head over the graphics section and select Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 from the list of games. Then scroll down to driver settings. Here's where we fine tune things. Set DLSS override model presets to use different settings for each DLSS technology. Now for frame generation, select the latest version available and for DLSS Super Resolution choose the latest preset, right now that's the K preset. Once that's all set you can close the NVIDIA app and we'll move on to the NVIDIA control panel for some additional tuning. Right click on your desktop and open it up. Head over to the Manage 3D Settings section and make sure that Low Latency Mode is set to Ultra. Also check that Virtual Reality pre-rendered frames is set to 1. Also, if you want, you can set Power Management Mode to prefer maximum performance. This ensures that your GPU runs at its full potential without throttling down, providing the best possible performance during demanding VR session. The next step is purely for debugging purposes. It's a quick way to confirm that the sim is actually using the correct DLSS version and preset we applied earlier. You can skip this if you're confident everything's working or enable it just once for testing and then turn it off afterward. To disable it later, you simply delete this registry entry. To do it, click on your Windows search bar, type reg and select the registry editor from the results. Once you're 
in uh, your registry editor, go to local machine, software, search for NVIDIA Corporation, go to global, NGX Core. Once you're here, right click in the folder, create new D Word 32 bit value. Now, this is important. Name it Show DLSS Indicator. Just like that. Once you've done, press enter right click on it modify choose decimal base and uh, value data set 1024 and click ok then you can see 1024 here this will enable a text overlay in the bottom left corner of your screen while you're flying, showing the DLSS version and preset you're currently using. Alright, before diving into the MSFS settings, let's take a look at Pimax Play. Go to the device settings. Into the device section, select a 90 Hz upscale refresh rate. This strikes a good balance between performance and visual quality for most setups. Next, head over to the Games tab. Under Common Settings, set the render quality to 0.75. This will help improve performance without sacrificing too much visual fidelity. Then, enable Pimax OpenXR what views and Pimax Central Priority Rendering and set to Quality Preset. Under the General tab, make sure Pimax OpenXR is the active runtime. Well, I think it's time to move on to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and take a look at the in-game settings. Head into VR, then go to VR Graphics. Here, make sure to select NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution and set the preset to Quality. Next, turn on foveated rendering. This improves performance by reducing image quality in your peripheral vision while keeping everything sharp where you're actually looking. Then, set the reprojection mode to Depth. What this does is help smooth out the motion by intelligently filling in extra frames based on depth information. Now, since MSFS is quite demanding, you won't get extremely high FPS. But reprojection will make it feel like you're running at nearly double the actual frame rate. Now, let's take a look at the advanced settings. Alright, time for some test flights. Let's kick things off with a quick flight in the Bell 407, starting at the downtown Manhattan Heliport. This is a great spot to test performance, dense scenery, tall buildings, lots of detail. As we lift off, pay attention to the frame pacing and smoothness, especially as we move between low altitude and higher views over the city. The DLSS settings and reprojection really help keep things fluid here, even with all the complexity around us. The image is crystal clear, and the performance feels incredibly smooth despite the relatively low frame rate. Remember, with the reprojection we're effectively seeing close to double the frame rate which is why everything looks so fluid.
let's test one of the most demanding scenarios in terms of performance. We're inside the Boeing 737, lined up and ready for takeoff at JFK Airport. I honestly don't think you could find a more resource-heavy situation than this. High-density scenery, detailed aircraft systems, traffic, etc. As expected, the frame rate is quite low. But surprisingly, the experience is still very playable. So performance really depends on the aircraft and the location, but overall, it's still a very enjoyable experience. Right now, I'm getting around 40 to 50 frames per second on the ground with the 737. With the Bell, I was getting between 60 and 70. Also, keep in mind that I'm recording the video while flying, so a few frames per second are likely being used for that as well. Super cool. Now let's close things out with a quick flight in the Super Hornet over the Alps. This is the perfect way to push both the headset and the sim. High speed, rapid altitude changes and stunning environment full of terrain detail and lighting effects. As we fly over the mountains, you can really appreciate the clarity of the image and how stable everything feels in motion. That wraps it up. I hope this guide helped you get the most out of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 with your Pimax Crystal Lite. Don't forget to check the video description for all the details on the Pimax Crystal Lite flash sale. Remember, it's a limited 5-hour window, so if you're thinking about upgrading your VR setup, now's the time. Also, don't forget to subscribe 
hit that like button and leave me a comment. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao!